Okay, so we're going to do this still life in an 8x10. That's a lot to cram in an 8x10. But All we'll right, see what we can do. so start the way we usually do. We're going to mix up some purple. A little Prussian, Prussian blue, and some Elizabeth Crimson. And then we will put that down as a ground. As our subject, even though our subject is mostly orange, the blue will be a nice contrast to that. And let's see here. And this is just an 8 by 10. gives us sort of a medium tone that I can then build my image from, my grisaille, so you don't see the uh, lights and darks value changes. So let's see, yeah it's going to be tough working with small. Would it be better to eliminate the bowl? No. Leave the bowl in. Maybe. Let that go off. Let's put the bowl. Okay. Do you want to make it bigger? No. Let's see what we can do here. Okay. Kind of complex. I know. So I was thinking it might be a bit more of a challenge than what I'm ready for. Well, it might be. But we'll see. I've got a couple weeks to work on it. Right. I'll and do you several. Do it, throw it away, do it, throw it away. I'm going to start with uh, look at value changes. Some issues drawing this thing for you too. I know. Should we just eliminate it down to a peeled grapefruit sitting on the peels and be done? It'd be a whole lot easier. <laughs> we could do that. Let's do that. You want to do that? I'm gonna get overwhelmed. I think you will get overwhelmed by this. I think okay. we need something very simple. Okay, so we're gonna start over. Um, much simpler setup. I think that's going to help a lot. It takes a little while to work out your lights and darks. So I kind of block it in a little bit, but then I have to come in and I'm going to have to do a little bit of drawing so I can get a sense of mm -hmm. where, where these things parts are. The lightest lights are on that, on the ground, on the back quarter mm. of the fruit and on the surface of the peel there in the back, right? Yeah. Shadow coming off of here. Shadow comes off here. Let's see. not hearing any audio because I'm not talking. 
We don't have any background music. No, we don't have background it's music. It's the sound either. of deep thought. It's that, it. yeah, that's it. And concentration. Creativity. And genius at work. Well, I don't know about that. No. Well, I thought I found, I heard genius. Did you? Yeah, it sounds like nothing. It sounds, <laughs> yeah, it sounds like nothing. <laughs> kind of like nothing. Sounds like crickets chirping. I'm kind of glad I had the cut up more of grapefruit. That's kind of yummy. Yeah, it did taste pretty good. And keep in mind, this is all just a guideline. Right. So. All right, now, see, now I've got something to work with. I can kind of see it. So I'll come back. I have here. a hard time seeing your notes. I know. Oops. I think I'm more than I want to there. At this point, I'm where I'm working on. I'm really kind of seeing this kind of in the blocking out stages, and hoping I'm hoping that a picture will emerge. Sometimes it doesn't. It's been a couple months since I've painted in the studio. Yeah. We can leave that tray set up for me. Actually, we'll need to spin it to the left side for me, left-handedness. This tray? That tray. The, the set there. Oh, the set, yeah, we can leave it there. And turn yeah. it around. Do whatever you want to do. Okay. Well, I could work like that. You tell it's me. already set up. Let's just leave it that way. Yeah. I'm just sort of working over my left shoulder, or my right shoulder. But that's not where you would normally put things. Normally, you I set would up put, normally I'd put the paint over here and the, and the... Oh, okay. So you're, so you set it, really, it up so I that it would be left-handed. Yeah, I have set up the way okay. that you probably would want to use it. All right. I think. Okay. It's interesting how different it is from different angles. I stand here and look at it. It's a whole different thing. Yep. That's why when you get your spot, you want to kind of keep your feet right. in one, one place. Otherwise, you're going to run into problems. So you don't have to take this to a completed painting as long as I get the idea of what it right. needs to do. So the point is that I do this. I know, but I want to see if I can even do it myself. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that would be helpful. If you can't do it, I pretty much guarantee I can't. I'm going to tell some of the backstory of this. The reason we are doing this particular still life is because my daughter is getting married and my sister and her two kids are coming up to help with the wedding and they're going to be doing a whole lot of work for us. In and theory. <laughs> in theory. That's the idea, is that they're going to be doing all sorts of stuff to make this thing happen. So I was thinking of what gifts I could get them, and the two kids, I can get them some books that they would like. And my sister, who has everything and gets anything she wants when she wants it, I had no idea what to give her. And she's in the middle of a kitchen remodel right now. And one of my girls mentioned that she might like, she would like some art for the walls, and I've been doing this whole painting thing. So we thought maybe I could paint her this still life. And the reason this particular subject matter is because whenever we're together, I usually end up peeling grapefruit for everyone. And our family has this particular way we eat grapefruit that's more of a dissection, really. My dad did it always. And it's because we don't like that white part. We don't want to eat that white part. It's bitter. We don't like it. So I peel it so that all of it is gone and we put it all in a bowl and everybody eats off of it and we end up doing about four grapefruits at a time. 
So we thought for her wall, we could make her a painting of a grapefruit in memory of all the times that I've sat and peeled grapefruit at her house. Because we're we've probably done this for 20 years. But almost any time I see her, or because she lives in Oklahoma, so I don't see her all the time. So we're together for a few days, and almost always we'll have grapefruit, and I'll sit and peel grapefruit at some point. So that's the long-winded story of why we're doing this particular story. Okay. I think I can work with that. I'm going to go ahead and mix up some orange. I'm now that, yeah, what is that? I'm going to take some cad yellow and some lizard. Yeah, I can get a kind of a dark orange. Is, we'll there's a, is there another yellow I, you had me? A brighter yellow. What's that one? There is the one. That's a cad yellow deep, actually. Okay. Well, it's medium, I think. Um, it's What is that? Yeah, cad yellow medium. Yeah. And you've had me using the light? Yeah, I had you using some lemon yellow, but okay. we don't need that. Do All right, and this is cad yellow and alizarin. And alizarin, which makes a pretty good orange. It's bright, yeah. Yeah, so we're just going to... And it mixes in with the blue, which is nice, because I really want a little bit of a greenness in there, because I'm going to put lighter colors on top. Go ahead and do... Kind of come around here, just kind of pick up wherever there's yellow. This will definitely be a challenge for me. I'm going to do several. Yeah, this is going to be a challenge, that's for sure. I think if you monkey with it a few times, you'll be able to get it. Whatever you get will be... be I know, but I want to make sure I'm happy with it. Well, yeah. It'll be handmade. I'll do it, this and the Simon Addy, Addy men stuff while you're gone. Theoretically. <laughs> no, I will have time. I will find time. I will make sure... I have time to work on this. Since this is a flat surface, that's mm -hmm. why I kind of work it this way. Okay. So you get the illusion that it's a yeah, flat surface. Yeah, well, and the grapefruit little pieces in there look kind of like they go that direction. I'm going to take some of this uh, cad yellow and mix it in with a, just a little bit of the... Uh, mm, get a little bit of green in uh, that yellow. A little bit of the... Uh, Prussian, it'll give me mm -hmm. a green. That's where I want. That's what I want down here. I think. Now what I need to do is mix up a salmon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this orange that I mixed up before. I'm going to put a little mm -hmm. Naples in. Okay. It's a good color. Kind of lighten it up. I can put just a little more red in there. Kind of a sunset color. Yeah, maybe even just a little bit more. Okay, that went too far. So <laughs> it's like cookies and milk, you know. It is. The ongoing dilemma. It's a little too red. I'm going to add a little more yellow to that. Quite the pile of paint there now. Yeah, I'm not sure that's the right color either, but it's close. Let's see if it does. That looks pretty good. I could do better. Yeah, I'm sure you could do better. It's good for a start. Yeah. See, I did get too much yellow in it probably, but that's all right. Right, it's just to show me what to do. Right. So I'm just kind of laying in there. I'm really just mm -hmm. wanting to get some value b balances. And I think we could probably get some of that in here. I have to remember not to make it too detailed. It's right. not. I'm not doing a photograph. And I need to remember lights and darks and values. Let me take some of this. And squint at it. Squint. Always squint. It 
It's real easy to make it too orangey. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're getting that bottom curve. Yeah, there. yeah that, that shadow. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much a yeah pinkish red. It's not dark. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's dark in value, but it's not. What's going on here? Yeah, and all that dark green underneath there, mm -hmm. that's gonna some of that's gonna pop through, so we're gonna cover up most of it, but so I'm gonna run that through there. I have a tendency I've noticed to cover up everything with the next layer. You, you don't need to. And you I see that little bit of blue popping right. through there. And we that's can, that's we can, a good thing. Yeah, we can keep some of that. Now that okay, I need a pretty much a navels and a white for a number of different things. Mm -hmm. Maybe over white, white. I just want to make sure it's recording. Yeah, but it doesn't make any noise. It doesn't make any noise. Cool. Good color. And although this color belongs to this peel, mm -hmm. uh, what I'm mainly using it for is to define this edge okay. here okay. As, this, as it comes around. It does that. And there's a, I guess it comes up like this. Can you see that much? What? I guess you can see that much from where you are. Yeah. It's a little different from me, yeah. from where I am. Go ahead and put that in here. The light comes around so far, and then you get into a shadow area. Yeah. And then that would be more Naples in it? And that shadow's almost purple. A purple. White, if you have a white or a, an off white that's in a shadow area, it's, it's oftentimes going to go to purple. I'm going to mix up some Naples. It's Naples and blue primarily, but that's going to work. And you mixed that, you put Naples in the pile of purple that you had from the ground. Yeah, I just ground. Threw, it, threw it in there and uh, kind of mix it with my brush. There's some subtle colors in here that if you can get them, that'd be great, but mm -hmm. if you don't. Mainly, I'm still like, like always. I just want to get some value changes. So let's get. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's all right. I was gonna say it's a little dark, but I think it's all right. It's dark, but it works. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it's good. It's a placeholder. Everything's a placeholder yeah. right at this point. All right, now I'm gonna mix up. Take some white and okay. mix it in here. We're making a purple, purple with white instead of purple with Naples to use on the shadow area. The shadow has a very strong edge to it. Mm -hmm. uh, which I've painted it that way, but I'm going to soften that right. edge some as we go along. Now, I'm going to use, use that same, just to keep it simple, it's probably not exactly the same color, but the background is kind of blue, so let's go ahead and use that mm -hmm. same thing up here. Because it'll read right. Go ahead and bring it down underneath there. So I've got this line that's kind of coming at an angle. Uh-huh. Uh, kind of I feel like I'm out of practice. Kind of aware aware of where mm -hmm. it's hitting this. I don't want it to get I don't want it to touch that little thing, so uh, this is the I wanted to catch that little corner there. Right. So what the background is doing is it's 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 helping me define these 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 change of directions. Because that you want to show that, that that rind has a has a thickness Curve. to it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use 
some white and the navels for the surface here too which could be confusing but it is about the same color as the inside of the brine yeah it is and you see what I'm doing I'm just kind of I'm, I'm maintaining I'm the shape but I'm kind mm -hmm. of breaking it into the shadow areas now what I'm doing is I'm letting this which again is a negative space essentially define that that edge of that rind So to do something like this in a lighter tone mm -hmm. and make it work, that really is pretty challenging because you're reducing your amount of values you can have. Right. Because once you take the contrast out, then you've got to rely more on color. color. And you can do it with color. And there's some wonderful things. Some of the Russian painters do that kind of stuff. Uh, Billy O is kind of doing some of that stuff. He's, he's dropped out some of the contrast, mm -hmm. um, but you've got to get your colors to work right. They don't have to be—they don't have to be realistic colors, but they have to be colors that worked. You have to really—it takes more color. It's more color theory. Mm. You got to kind of know what you're doing, and be very, very lucky. It's surprising, it looks really light on the palette, but once I get it here, it looks really dark. Interestingly enough, the thickness of that rind is not the same as this brush. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What I want to do, it's a, when you mix it with your brush, like I was been doing, it, it tends mm -hmm. to get you don't mix it, it well gets enough. yeah, it gets dirty. Everything mixes together. I want something a little cleaner, so I want to mix that a new clean purple with some white in it. And every time the purple is Prussian blue and. Yeah, that's. I'm just using Prussian, Prussian blue and alizarin crimson. Uh, and you put white in this time. I put white in this time, and it's gonna. By mixing it with palette knife, I can keep the palette knife clean. What's happening is I think I've got stuff in my brush. Let's see, I want it lighter than that. So I'm gonna add. What looks good on the palette sometimes doesn't work on the surface, so I'm gonna lighten it up. That looks like maybe too light. Well, it might not be. Might not, yeah, it might not be. But it sure looks like it. It does now. We'll find out. Mm -hmm. What's going on, on top of that or not? That could be alright. It reads right. Okay, and you're doing little short strokes rather than a long yeah, and stripe I'm going, around. I, I had done that before just to kind of build it in there, but now I want to come the other direction because I can control it better. Uh -huh. I can come in, and with and that dark. Essentially, what I'm doing is I'm going from the center of the mm -hmm. of the circle. Right. Going out. Okay. okay, we're going. We're recording. Go away. I'm going to use that same one up here. You see the shadow in this area mm -hmm. has gotten green, so this is going to cool it down. No, not I'm not going to obliterate that green, but I'm going to put a little bit on top of that so that you get a little bit of both. That's okay. where it's what yeah, I don't have that shadow from where I'm standing, no, but I'll believe you. Okay, yeah, I see it now. This is what impression is, I'm true impression is. This is what I think, one of, one of the things that I think impression is you all about. You do have a shadow that's where you have, different from that back. You have one color next to another color. All right. So, we right need Right now to it's all stripey looking. It's like a superhero grapefruit. Mm -hmm. Take this. I think this is too yellow. Let's add some white to it. Okay. Now, what did you just mix up there? I took this, uh, the the Naples and the orange, and uh, added and, white and to added it. Just yeah, I took some of that and added some white to it. Okay. And what that's going to make it more of a salmon color. I'm right. actually I'm going to put a little more a little more red into it, so it's going to pink it up a little right. bit. Right. I'm just playing with it. I didn't want it quite so orangey. Yeah, I'm going to like that better, I think. It's kind of a silly putty color, but it's just about right what it should yeah. be. Yeah. What's nice about having, I mean, I can have a color be wrong, and that's fine, because I'm, mm -hmm. I'll get the right color, but that, that wrong color is going to be in there. It's going to help give me some variation. In it. So I'm going to, 
Let's try that. That's a little better. Ooh, still not quite right. It's pinker. Yeah, it's pinker. Yeah, but it needs to be pinker. Yeah. It'll do for me. Just. Yeah, it'll do. Yeah. I also have to be careful not to introduce too many colors. Right. Well, we started with uh, with the well, you got one red. blue, one red, right. one yellow, and white and Naples, and that's all you've right. got. But so I can mix up all sorts of things from there, and, and, and I'll end up with yeah. too many colors in there. Well, yeah, careful. but they they should work together because you're not introducing a whole bunch of other I know. things. So. Be consistent. Well, right, if I, if you can do it, you know, if you mm -hmm. mix up, you got a color in the main this main area here. Mm -hmm. I can put that same color somewhere else. Right. To it tie kind of ties together. it together. You know, I can do. I don't have to do it a lot of it, but just a little bit. Of it. All right. Um, going to. I'm going to go with just pure white almost. And this is the place I get stumped. Yeah. So you want to. Pick up some of that skin yeah. there. Yeah, I'll put this guy in the fridge and play with him again tomorrow. And I'm this you're going to have to kind of finesse, finesse it. Mm -hmm. and this is where you're going to probably run into some problems. I know, I'll just go slow. Yeah. Now see how the values of those two things are mm -hmm. pretty close? Yeah. And what it, in the actuality, that, that little thing where that rind gets dark back there, so I'm going to darken that up in just a few minutes here. And keep in mind what the grapefruit's doing. Um, it it radiates out from the center, so mm -hmm. I'm kind of keeping that in mind because you've got this veining that it's got to be kind of make some sort of sense that it's coming out from the center. Back to this sort of acid green. Oops. Whoa. I don't want to do that. That's too green. Let's add a little red to that. See, I deaden it down. Almost the same color I had. Mm hmm. Now see, to me that looks like that would be just a horrible color in there, but it's going to turn out to be perfectly mm, it's fine. It's because it's in put, shadow. Yeah. Uh, and you'll brighten it up a little bit. Maybe. Uh, anything that's in shadow is going to have blue in it. Okay. Well, okay. That's, when I say that, that's because we're working with a warm light source, which means your shadows are going to be cool. If your light source was cool, then your shadows would be warm. But So that means you could take that yellow, what color you think it really is, and add blue to it, and you're going to be just pretty, pretty much right on. And then it's just a matter of getting the value right. Same way here. It's actually just a little warmer, but let's do this. Yeah, round two. See how now I can put that against that white, mm -hmm. and it's going to make it pop a little bit. I think I'm going to keep this painting at least until I'm done with mine for reference. Okay. I won't scrape it down. I'm afraid this is certainly not a masterpiece, but no. Well, it's notes for me. I don't want it to be a masterpiece. If it was a masterpiece, I wouldn't even paint it. Right. Coming in a little bit lighter. Find out where my lights are. I know it's light in here. I almost go. It almost go pure white, mm -hmm. and it mixes in with with what's already. In. There's some Naples in there. Mm -hmm. When you lay it in, it's going to pick up. It's going to go on white. 
Yeah. You can only do, you, every now and again you just, and I put that on, but if I keep playing with it, it's going to just start yeah. blending. What I do then, I need to go get more paint. It starts doing it. You kind of have to get a feel for that. There's an edge right there. And then this is... What's nice about these flats is they you can get the nice chiseled edge. So it comes around and can do sort of get a consistency of thickness of this of the uh, the rinds. There is some complexity. Okay. Oh, come on. I'm going to lighten up this shadow, I think. It's awful hard. It's awful heavy. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take some of this, this light purple that I used in the shadow area here. Mm -hmm. Now let's see, I'm going to add just a little blue to it. But basically right now I've got blue and, blue and white a little bit enabled. Mm -hmm. just, just to bring the value up. It doesn't need to be dark to say shadow. Mm -mm. I think we probably could go lighter than that. The Prussian, when you add white to it, mm -hmm. it just makes a really screaming color, I think. Mm -hmm. so gets, if you look at you, if you squint your eyes, you'll see that it gets darker mm -hmm. as, as you get closer to the, to the object, so it's lighter out towards the edges. Yeah. Because it's getting reflected light in there. Right, and right at the base where the thing right. hits the board, it's really dark. Yeah, see how here it gradates from here mm -hmm. to darker. Now what I'm going to do... Alright, now what I'm going to do... I'm going to go to sandpaper. Alrighty. I don't know whether you do this or not. So I'm using this as a blending tool. It also makes interesting marks, I think. Mainly in the sh where shadow hits the surface. Let's go ahead. And see so the that edge kind of just breaks the edge, break through the edge. Yeah, you're going. And now I'm going to take up some purple again. Let's just come in here and see how I can do that. And I don't have to go all the way around and make it a continuous line, mm -hmm. but it's a it's a broken line. Okay, you can bring that up in here. But your eye says, okay, mm -hmm. it's, it's connected. Same way here, I can do that. Just bring it in. Mm -hmm. Yep, you're going. Here. And then I'm going to darken up this background. That way I can, now I can find that edge and clean this edge up. I'm just about done here. You're going to keep the edge hard like that? Up there I want it hard, yeah. Okay. Because it's, you know, I can get, it, it helps, a few hard edges in there help define, give your, your, you know, if it's an edge I don't like, mm -hmm. then I can always soften it down, but I am, I'm okay with that, I think. And then what I want to do is I'm going to take, this shadow area that's right in here, I want to put mm -hmm. some some pretty dark red. So I'm going to take okay. that lizard and I'll just, yeah, and I'll show you what I can do. Just run that. Yeah, there, that like works. So. Mm -hmm. Right at that surface. Yeah, edge. just, you know, again, not everywhere. What that does, if you leave this little bit of orange mm -hmm. popping through here, it's going to look, it's going to give that illusion that it's glowing. Mm -hmm. From behind, and same way, let's just do it just a little bit. You have to kind of be find a spot mm -hmm. there, and I think you could probably put. Uh, I was thinking that there. same thing. I'm gonna mix up some pink. So 
That's just the lizard, just, yeah, lizard, lizard in white. white. And the reason what I'm going to do with that is I want to put that in here. And you see that a little bit bright. Just yeah. brightens that up just a little bit. It's going to be everywhere. And maybe a little bit here. So that there's a little variation in there. And then the Naples. Is what I'm just going to. I want it to be, it's got to have some darkness to it, so it's going mm -hmm. to be a little more red. It's orange with Naples and a little red. Yeah, it's, I just yeah, want to, I want to get, it. there's a, this surface and mm -hmm. there's this surface, yeah, and I want to sure have that. Yeah, that shows. And it's darkest right, right after it makes the turn, and then it gets light again. As it comes around here like this, and then there's that rind right in here. I mean, I... I mean, I really what was that? that? Just, you know, just a little something in there. Okay. I don't know if that's necessary or not. Now I'm gonna take some, just some white. I'm gonna just use the edge of the brush. I want to get. I really want that. To yeah, to show that edge of the, the rind. So it looks more like a coconut. <laughs> You know, I'm looking at the value of this in relationship to this. Mm -hmm. and this is pretty light too, so I'm going to have to put some light in there and throw a little bit in here. And just a little bit in here. Okay? Mm-hmm. We'll give it a go. Yeah.